I want to tell you how the love of God changed my life and why we all need to be acquainted with the love of God. I don't know how it happened, but somewhere along the line, I started to not like myself. I don't know the precise moment. It, it may have been in grade six when my grade six teacher accused me of being the worst human being he had ever met in his life because I was making fun of one of the kids in the class who was not as fortunate as my family was. His name was George, and uh, my grade six teacher saw that I was being kind of mean to him, but what he didn't know was is that we had always been kind to George, my family, and my dad was well aware of his underprivileged state and that we often brought him over to the restaurant and we fed him and we took care of him and we were always kind to him and my dad ta taught me to be kind and when my teacher made these accusations towards me they really hurt because they were not true and that's when it started up until that time I was confident up until that time I was full of joy but it was at that moment, and I can pinpoint it in my life, that things began to turn around and I became dark and morose. My confidence was gone. The words hurt and stung so deeply that I began to question, maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe there's something wrong with being born in a family of means. I don't know. But from then on, it was a down, downward spiral of self-condemnation. And as things began to go wrong in my life, as, as is the case with many people who have a, a bad self-image, you tend to blame yourself. If something goes wrong, it's, it's not circumstances or it's not forces outside of yourself, but it's your fault. And so the insecurity grows and the self-rejection grows. And then you try to compensate. And I spent my last two years in high school and many, many years of my life after that trying to compensate for a lack of confidence in my life. And my, my strategy was if I could get people to like me, to love me, if I could just get people to approve of me and affirm me, well, maybe the pain that I'm feeling will go away. So I did all kinds of things. I, I used talents and gifts that I knew I had to put on shows and comedy and drama and I, I did whatever was necessary. I, I did what I thought would please people and I tried to please a lot of people because I found out very quickly that no matter how many people you try to please and no matter how many people love you, it's never enough. When you've been hurt, when someone has stripped you of that which you are entitled to because God created us to be loved. You are entitled to be loved, first of all by Him and the people around you, that's His will. That's why the great commandment that Jesus shared with a scribe was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do this, then you've fulfilled all the law and the prophets. And if everybody does it, nobody gets hurt, nobody gets abused, nobody gets left out, nobody gets rejected. Nobody is cut down for no reason by harsh words spoken in misunderstanding and injustice. But when you have been cut down, and when you have been abused or hurt, nothing can heal it. I can tell you that. Because we are designed by God to, to be loved, not to be hated. And when we are hated or mistreated, it rubs so deeply against what we were created to be and what we were created to receive that the wounds are permanent. They don't go away. A divorce, the pain of a divorce never goes away. The pain of a broken friendship never goes away. If your partner betrays you or rips you off in business, you never forget it. If somebody sues you and takes you to court and tries to destroy you and your family. That stays with you. Now, when you start to blame yourself and when you start to look inward and believe that there are deficiencies about you that have caused these things to happen, it doesn't go away. 
and especially it doesn't go away when you try to compensate and try to get the world to applaud and affirm. I found out very quickly that no matter how many shows I put on and no matter how many people I made to laugh and no matter how many friends I would do any crazy thing to get them to be impressed with me, it was never enough. I still did not like myself. And then one day I met Jesus. I was 19 years old, and by that time, my lack of love for myself and my wounded image or self-worth was, was so serious that I developed a disorder which needed treatment. And the tr all the treatment did was lull me to sleep so I wouldn't feel the pain. But one day somebody told me about Jesus and the love of God. And he told me that Jesus, that God so loved the world that he gave Jesus to come into the world to take away that one thing that prevents all of us from loving the way that God wants us to love. To love him with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and to love one another. And that condition is sin. But a year ago, the young adults and myself found out that sin is the lack of love and the lack of the ability to love perfectly and consistently. That's all sin is. Not being able to love God and not being able to love your neighbor. But loving on occasion, but not consistently, consistently enough to create a relationship with God and to beautify and to perfect the relationships that we have with one another. And that's why Jesus came, to take away this condition of sin so that we could be freed from it. First of all, freed from its conditions, freed from its consequences towards us, but also bearing in mind that every one of us is a sinner and every one of us has hurt somebody. And that condition of sin had to be removed from us. And that's why Jesus came. And so he came and he spoke of the, of the kingdom of God. Oh, those are fireworks. Let me tell you what, what this is. This is the, the Italian festival. This is their, lib their liberation day. So it's appropriate for what I'm saying because when I met Jesus, it was my liberation day. So I don't mind the fireworks. I don't mind the fireworks. The fireworks are perfectly appropriate. So let them, let them pop away, because that's exactly how I feel. I found out Jesus came, God in the flesh came. Can you imagine that? That's how much he loved us. He didn't require us to try to reach out to him. No, he came and reached out to us, and he talked about the kingdom of God, and then he went to the cross and bore on himself the sins of every man and woman and boy and girl who would ever live. He took away that lack of love and that lack of ability to love, absorbed it into himself, shed his blood that the penalty of sin would be wiped away from all, for all of us, and then died and rose from the dead, declaring that now anyone who has faith in him shall be free from sin and shall be able to love. But more importantly than that, more importantly than that, be able to experience for himself or herself the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. And I did right away. And he displayed it in such an amazing way because Jesus displays his love in two ways. First of all, he testifies to you that he loves you in your spirit. You feel it inside. But he also demonstrated from the, demonstrates it through people around you that love him and are able to demonstrate the love of God in him. And in my case, it was my wife, Wendy. She was 16 years old when I started dating her. And, but because she had the love of Jesus in her heart, she was able to do what the psychiatrist couldn't do. And she got into a battle, and the battle was that I'm going to convince this man that he is precious in the sight of God. She made it her business from the day we started dating. To every time I would say, I'm no good, to say to me, no, God doesn't create junk. To say, 
that every time I would say I can't do anything, she would say to me, you can do all th things through Christ who strengthens you. And to say to me one day, the thing that just won me over, I think it finally won me over with regard to the love of Jesus. I asked her one day, why do you love me? Is it because I'm cute? Is it because I'm handsome? And she said, no, I love you just because I love you. And I love you because I see Jesus in you. I see something beautiful in you. Nobody ever told me that because I was not beautiful at the time. But she was able to see something that God was doing and was going to do and complete. She saw the love of Jesus in me. And because of her, I learned to love myself. It was Jesus moving through her. And that's what the gospel is, isn't it? Isn't it the love of Jesus moving through his people? The love that he displayed on the cross uh, when he died and rose again to, to remove the sins of the world, to enable us to love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and to love one another the way Jesus loves. Isn't that the solution that the world is looking for? Isn't that, if every man and woman can capture it, the thing that will bring peace on earth and goodwill towards men? And the answer is absolutely and I am a witness of it I am a recipient of it the love of God changed my life because it allowed me to love myself and when I understood how much Jesus loved me I was able to love people like I never loved them before that's God's solution that's God's solution for the darkness of this world he changes people one by one through his love the love displayed on the cross and as he changes people together, the kingdom of God advances, advances, and it becomes enlarged. And one day Jesus will return, and he will set up a kingdom all over the earth. Heaven and earth will be joined together, and there will be no more dying, no more abuse, no more hurt, no more killing, no more war, no more anything negative, because there will be peace forevermore.